this example we're looking at water at 208 Celsius and 2.15 megapascals. So if you go to the uh, saturated water table, uh, we are in uh, this region here. Uh, so our saturation pressure is somewhere between 15 and 19 bar. Uh, our pressure is 2.15 megapascals, 21.5 bar. So we are certainly above uh, saturation pressure. Uh, and we must be in the compressed liquid phase. Now, uh, we could proceed by going to the compressed liquid table, um, but I would like to show you a more uh, general and more flexible way of doing it uh, that relies on an approximation and only requires the saturated water table. So, uh, this is the way it works. Uh, if we think about a TV diagram for water, And let's draw some uh, constant pressure curves on that. And the thing about the constant pressure curves on the TV diagram is uh, they all collapse down to a single curve when they get into the compressed liquid region. Uh, and in fact, they pretty much collapse onto the saturated liquid uh, side of the saturation dome. Even the supercritical pressures uh, do the same sort of thing. Uh, and if this was an accurate TV diagram, uh, it would be even more obvious that all these curves would just disappear into one vertical line on the left-hand side. So what this means is that there is no difference in volume between the highest pressures and the lowest pressures in the compressed liquid region. Okay, uh, And that's just another way of saying something that everybody knows. Liquid water is incompressible, almost completely incompressible. Uh, if you increase the pressure on it, its volume does not change. So the volume only depends on the temperature. It does not depend on uh, pressure. So mathematically, we could say uh, that uh, V uh, is a function of uh, temperature only. It's not a function of a second thermodynamic property, like most things are for um, compressed liquid. Uh, and a bit more specifically, uh, V is equal to Vf, the volume of saturated liquid uh, at the same temperature. Okay, And it turns out that the same is true for uh, internal energy, uh, and the same is true for entropy, for compressed liquid. Uh, and I should have an approximately equal sign up there as well. Okay, so let's put that to work in this example. Okay, so at, uh, we're asked to find the enthalpy. The enthalpy H is equal to U plus PV. Uh, so we're going to uh, find U and V. This little approximation doesn't work for enthalpy. Okay, so we have to uh, we have to do it by finding U and finding uh, V. We already know P, so we'll calculate enthalpy. So okay, so at 208 degrees C, uh, our U is approximately UF at 208 degrees C. Uh, we're going to need to interpolate to find that. So uh, where are we? We are interpolating between these two values here. <coughs> Take V as being approximately Vf at 208 degrees. So we're now interpolating between these two. And that, of course, is times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per kilogram. So our enthalpy is uh, 878.55 uh, 
and we need to take care with the units here plus pressure uh, times volume Eight eight one eight eight one point oh six kilojoules per kilogram. 